Okay, I'm back. It's been about six months since I last posted a tutorial here on this channel. So hopefully those of you that have stuck around are uh, eager to see what I have to share with you today, which is a chiseled vector uh, type effect inside of Adobe Illustrator. This is something that um, was born out of my 36 days of type projects from the last two years. There were a couple characters in there that kind of had this feeling to it that I really wanted to explore a little bit more. So I was playing around with it and it's got to this point where I think it's worthy of uh, sharing with you. If you clicked on the thumbnail, you're probably interested in seeing how to build this and uh, I'm hoping that the skills and techniques that I'm going to share with you today will be something that you could take and expand on and uh, apply to your, to your work, your projects. So let's go jump into Illustrator and start working on this effect. Okay, here we are in Illustrator. The first thing we're gonna do is create a new document. So you can go File New, or you could use key commands because we're all about key commands. Command N, new document box pops up. I'm gonna use 20 by 20 in inches as my document size. Feel free to make it larger, smaller. It's up to you, really. Here we go. So here's our 20 by 20 document. I'm, I've got some stuff on my clipboard that I'll paste in. It's an example of what it is that we're gonna create. It's the wireframe of our chisel, chiseled letter. It's a tongue twister. It's an example of the pattern swatches that we'll create and how we'll fill these things. And it's my color palette. So feel free to make your own. You don't have to copy this, but I thought it was cool to kind of have three cool tones and then a warm color that kind of contrasted for the left side of all of our chisel text. Just my personal preference. Feel free to make all four of them more like complimentary or go really crazy, but I like this palette for this project. Up to you what you guys decide to do with that. So we'll just put these down here to reference when we're building this. And our color palette obviously is up there. To start with, what I'm gonna do is create a set of custom guides. Now, I think custom guides don't get used very often, but they're a very powerful feature. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the rectangle tool, press M on your keyboard to pull it up. It's over here in your, in your toolbar. And just click once. And we're gonna create a one by one square. And we're gonna go into our colors over here. We're gonna turn off the fill, add a stroke. Doesn't matter what the width is right now. Just visually wanted to see a stroke on here. We're gonna grab the top corner. We're gonna press option to create a copy. We're gonna hold shift to constrain and following where our smart guide snaps to, where it says intersect there, we're gonna create a copy. Your smart guides, if you don't have them on, are visible here, view smart guides, command U to turn them on and off. I have them on all the time, I find them very handy. Sometimes they can get annoying though, if you're in a really tight spot and doing something finicky to see them flashing all the time. So Command U turns them on or off. Command D at this point is to transform again. So it repeats the last transformation you made. We slid a box over and created a copy. It will repeat that process. You can find it up here, object, transform, transform again. And one more time. This gives us a grid of four cubes. We're gonna select all four, and with the same process, we're gonna hold down Option, Shift, and we're gonna create another set of copies here. You can see where this is going. Command D, twice more, and we've got a nice four by four grid. What's cool about these boxes is they have the center points attached to them. If you just made these grids by dragging out lines here for uh, guidelines from your rulers, you would have to physically create multiple extra sets to achieve the same coverage from your guides. So I did all those guides with these shapes selected. If you hit command five, you will create guides out of them, including the center points there like I talked about. If you want to access that through the menu, when you had them selected, you can go up here, view, guides, make guides. 
And there you go. Here's the guides that we're now going to start to build all of our chiseled letter forms on top of. It's good to be accurate and uh, like precise at this point because say your guides were off, your boxes were off just by a fraction of an inch, it then is going to mean all of the letters that you are building on top with these guides are all going to be off. So be clean and precise at this point and everything will be consistent down the road. So we're going to use the pen tool now, P on the keyboard to pull that up and we're going to create just a simple line. I want this line to be a bit thicker so let's pull up the stroke weight here and make it a five point stroke. I created that single line all the way across. The pen tool wants to keep drawing and wants to keep adding until you would come over and close the path. We don't want that. We want to create a second line separate from this one. So we just want to drop this with command shift A to deselect. The pen tool is still active. Now we can find our intersect point here and create the center line of our T and command shift A to drop that. Now here's our core or central element to the T. Now what I'm going to do, the feature I'm going to do is offset path. So we've got both these pieces selected and we're going to go object, path, offset path. If you were offsetting something like a circle or a square, a closed path, the, um, the distance that you input in here is only going to be a positive or negative offset. So you'll end up with a circle that's either bigger or smaller than your original circle, if we're using a circle as an example. Because these strokes were just lines, individual lines, they weren't closed paths, the offset actually goes in both directions. So you get a half inch offset vertically and uh, beneath. Um, the line. So it's kind of a cool way to create this bevel look where you're getting this automatically generated evenly spaced offset. So hit OK. Then we're going to select both of our outer shapes that were created and we're going to go over to the Pathfinder which is over here and we're just going to unite them. Now what we can do is use these corner points to create a 45 degree bevel. So P pulls up your pen tool, click here in the corner, and oh, see that wants to close up one of our um, paths. We don't want to do that. If you click directly on top, what it does is it joins you to your center path here, and then the miter that, that comes out of the corner is quite severe and is going to affect the way that this, this looks for us. So right now we don't want to do that. You can do it and then use the scissor tool and cut. And that should, once that refreshes, get rid of the miter. So sometimes that's what I'll do is I'll, I'll let Illustrator close that path and then I'll come back in and cut it afterwards so that you have two separate paths without that miter join. Alternatively, what I sometimes do when I'm creating that path or path like that is I'll just make it a bit short and then I'll use the white arrow, the direct selection tool and the shift function to make sure that it's constrained and then I'll drag it over. I can do the opposite on this side and the same thing's going to happen where it wants to close. That's the little icon for closing and we can do that. Or since you've done the work once, maybe what you want to do is just reflect it across the center. So with your shape selected and pressing O on the keyboard, you're going to pull up the reflect tool. You can option click on this point to define the reflection area and we can reflect across the vertical axis and make a copy. That's handy for the next step. What I'm going to show you is to create our little triangle bevel on this side. So here I'm going to use the pen tool, make sure everything's deselected, click in the corner, find my center point there, holding shift just to be sure I'm going to create a triangle. Here I'm not worried about the miter at the end because it will be hidden by this line here. So again, I use the direct selection arrow to pick up just the endpoint of that line and draw that back over there. So here's our triangle that we created. Let's reflect that. O, option click, copy, and there we go. Same step over here where we're going to shorten up this line. 
Now I'm, I'm moving the line. The other option that you can do is use the scissor tool and cut the line. Make sure you have it selected and then cut it. And then delete this piece. There you go, that's the top of our T. Let's create the triangle at the bottom quickly. So pen tool, shift to constrain, direct selection, and slide up. And our T is done. It's one of the simpler letters, so that's why I started with it. Um, very geometric. You can see all of the structure in here. It's gonna be similar in like your letter E, letter H, uh, letter I. So you can, you can reuse a lot of these pieces instead of having to build them over and over again. And here we go, I'll just drag that up there. And now we will do an S. The S will give you an idea of how I've built some of these curve letters. Um, again, there's a lot of repeatable elements in here. You can use one of these loops for like the letter uh, P, the letter B has got two, like a double set of loops, all kinds of ways to reuse the work that you've done and be more efficient that way. So to build the letter S, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my guide here. I'm going to find that center point. And I'm not going to come all the way to the corner. I'm going to come down to the middle. Down about there. And our center point, and then all the way to the end. And I create what looks like, uh, I guess that's the number five. Now I'm going to use my direct selection arrow to pick up these two points. I'm going to hold shift to then pick up these points as well. And now I could use the rounding handles to create circles or uh, round those corners off so that they look like a half circle. And now if I do the same process over again, go object, path, offset path, I can create that one inch wide letter form that follows my original central path. And then I'm going to do the same thing with my triangles at the end, find my center point, direct selection arrow, drag this over down here. I just turn my guides off to look at the letter. Now, I've got a color palette of four colors. If I was just to use this the way that it was sitting right now, I wouldn't have the left, right, top, bottom um, effect that I kind of want to create. So I need to add in a few more divisions. And what I found worked well for these on my rounded letters is I would find the anchor point on the smaller inner curve and using the pen tool I would just create 45 degree angles that extend out to the outer border and I do the same up here on the upper one and then visually what this gives you is the break inside of the character that lets you define the left and right side of your chisel with your four color color palette Okay, so there we go. There's the core work in building these letters. You can go ahead and start building your own and taking some liberties with the way that you're setting it all up or following along exactly as I built these two. Now, I'm gonna start colorizing these. So one thing that I like to do when I've got letters like this that are, are still live, still have strokes, I like to maintain that work just in case I need to come back and modify it later. So I'll just create a copy of them and that way, if there's anything I do here that I don't like, I'm able to go back to my original and not feel like I messed up. So these two letters here, we're gonna go object, path, outline stroke. Now we've created outlines of the stroked paths and they look like this. So instead of that single line with the live stroke, we now have rectangles like so. And what we're going to do is we're going to select one letter to start with. We'll do the letter T and we're going to use the pathfinder there just to unite everything and clean it all up. So now you can see the difference between those two. We've got the live stroke and the outlined and united compound path. Let's start with uh, the letter S over here and we're going to add some color to it. So I'm going to copy it to my clipboard, Command C so that I've got this saved on my clipboard. 
And then I'm going to, there's a couple ways you could do this. You could use the direct selection arrow and just pick up the outside point and press delete twice to delete it. And that leaves you with just the fill instead of this kind of stroked effect. Or you could go object path or uh, compound path, pardon me, release. And then you could delete this shape and that leaves you with the fill. And then if you hit command F, you paste the stroke back on top, which is cool. I'll undo that for now. Now you can pick up all these shapes that are on the left hand side of your letter form, fill it with that color, all the upper paths, fill it with that. All the right hand, fill it with the light blue and all the underside and fill it with the navy. And that's a cool looking effect on its own, but we wanted to add one more step here, which was these patterns. So I'll custom build, um, let's start with the polka dot. So we'll custom build a little pattern for the polka dot. Over here beside our letter, just so the scale we can kind of tell, I'm gonna make a square, fill it with the light teal using the eyedropper, eye on the keyboard to pull that up if you don't know that. And I'm gonna now create a circle, which is L on the keyboard to pull up the ellipse tool. It's over here in your tool palette. And from our center point, holding option and shift, we're gonna create a constrained dot. And we're gonna to go to our color palette and we're just going to arbitrarily darken that dot just a bit. Now we're gonna select both of those shapes, pull up our swatches, and we're gonna click and drag over here and it's gonna create a new pattern swatch, which you could then apply to all three of these in one click. And there's your polka dots. If you don't like the scale of the polka dots, you can just adjust the scale here of the original pattern stroke or pattern swatch that you're making and drag in a new version. Easier said than done, apparently. There we go. So now we could try that polka dot one instead and it's a bit smaller. Okay, so the next thing we wanna do is create a 45 degree angle line in our mustard color that becomes a pattern. So let's create another square in the mustard. And we're gonna create a rectangle that's aligned from our middle. So we'll hold down option when you click on the middle point, just so that it links to the middle and everything builds out from there. Create a rectangle. Let's make that slightly lighter yellow. Maybe a little bit more. There we go, like that. Now let's shear this. So we're gonna go object, transform, shear. And we wanna shear it by 45, press okay. We wanna use the square just to trim it. So we're gonna copy the square, paste it in front, and then select both shapes and use Pathfinder again to trim. Now, if we just repeat this, as a pattern swatch, it's not gonna work because the, the corners will leave voids when they repeat. It would look like this, which, I mean, it is a cool effect, but not the look that I'm going for here. So what you do with that is you just wanna make sure that this shape is repeated in that corner. Our center point will line up. Same thing in the bottom. And then we're gonna use this square again to trim these shapes. Oh, I lost my color there, so just make sure it's the right color with the eyedropper. So now this would be a properly repeating pattern, as you can see here, and it creates that uninterrupted 45 degree angle line. So let's select all of this and bring it into our pattern swatches and now we can fill 
all of these yellow pieces, just like that. So the last pattern is just, uh, I guess, a little X, a little graphic X. So let's pick up this color here and let's create, what do we want to create? A rectangle that's larger, and was that darker? It was darker. Okay, so we're just trying to replicate that with a darker blue. Doesn't need to be much, just trying to be subtle. We're gonna copy, paste in front this rectangle, rotate it, I'm gonna select both and rotate them. Make them larger, shift to constrain. Pathfinder, we can unite those, and then using the bottom square, we can do the trim, paste the square again. And now we could just make this X smaller, like there. And that creates that cool pattern that we saw on the right side of our letter. So once I got going, these, these letters started to come together pretty quickly. I put together the full alphabet, uh, no numbers or special characters at this point, but I ended up with three different looks out of this one project. I got the solid fill version, I've got the pattern filled version, and I've got just this outline version, which I think are looking pretty cool. So there you have it. Um, if you made it this far, I'm assuming that you were getting something useful out of the video. And uh, I would really appreciate it if you would do all those things that YouTubers ask for, which is to subscribe to the channel, uh, drop a comment down below, and give this video a thumbs up. All the support really means a lot. So thanks again for checking out this video and making it this far. There's probably like two of you watching at this point because I'm just blathering on, but I appreciate you. Hope you have a good one, hope you learned something from this, and we'll see you in the next one.